Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. Hi, I'm Roseanne, and I'm 112 days alcohol free today. Roseanne, incredible. 112 days. Well done. How do you feel today? I'm feeling pretty good, James. Thank you. Amazing. And I know that uh, over 90 days of not drinking, at least with my help inside of my program, you lost 21 pounds. Your blood pressure and your resting heart rate went down considerably as well. And you look terrific. Uh, Not that you didn't look terrific when, when you started, but it's noticeable, isn't it? Your before and after photo. They really are. Yeah. A lot, a lot has happened um, physically in terms of my health over um, the 112 days and the 90 days. Different things happened. Um, I actually started with the 30 day program um, and then about 20 or 21 days in it, I joined the 90. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you were drinking and what your drinking habits were before you decided to take action? Um, I was, I, for several years, um, pretty much was drinking every day. And I really didn't like that habit. I think over the years, um, my tolerance just increased and increased and increased. I wasn't, wasn't a drunk per se, but I could drink a heck of a lot, you know, um, it it was kind of weird because I don't think people really understood how much alcohol I could consume in a night. What were you drinking? I I had a weird combination because I loved wine until I got to about three glasses. (laughs) So I drink three quarters of a bottle of wine and then somehow would transition to maker's mark on the rocks. So, um, yeah, I was pretty good at doing some strong stuff over, you know, over the years. Was it white wine or red wine you were drinking? Uh, it depended on the uh, time of year. In the summer, I love my white. And with a nice steak, I like my red. So I could do both. And was it part of a nightly routine for you um, to wind down after a day? Or was it a something that you'd do with friends? Like what were the circumstances around you drinking the bottle of wine and then moving to Maker's Mark? Um, I think I, as, oh, you know, you know, I could go back to drinking when I was in college, right? And uh, at, at first it's just party and fun and this and that and then you go to work and it's more stress relief and get home and relax and, and then it's kind of a difficult marriage and it's numbing yourself from the pain of the marriage or the loneliness and, you know, year by year by year. I mean, I just think I was noticing, you know, issues with it. Uh, I hate to say it, but maybe up to 10 years and just gets worse and worse until you feel horrible and you understand it's controlling your life and you feel like a fraud. Um, to the people that you represent. Um, you know, I had a, a terrible mantra uh, within my brain happening that when people, you know, just really connected with me or liked me, I'd still go home and go, yeah, but if you knew me, you wouldn't, you know, because it's just that big secret that you're keeping and it's just a big weight. Um, that's present with you. So mm. it, was, it was difficult for me to like myself after a while. And how long did you feel that way? Huh. <laughs> uh, way too long. Way too long. I mean, definitely uh, five years, you know, and it just gets worse. It starts with something little. It's just like drinking. It starts with something, nothing, and then it grows into something bigger. And the longer you let it wait, the bigger it becomes. And to be clear, you didn't feel like, and nor are you what society might deem an alcoholic. It was just, you were someone who drank too much consistently. Is that fair? I, I appreciate you 
asking you that question because my vision for my life was always to be in a bar with my friends and just choose to be alcohol free. And for some reason, I was really stuck. Well, I know what reasons now after going through the program, but um, I couldn't get there. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, I didn't want to. For me, AA was go was like there was a stigma, and <clears throat> and you had to acknowledge that there was something wrong with you. And I was already kind of too hard on myself to go there. So that wasn't an option for me. So when I saw your program, I was like, hey, I like that. That's what I've been dreaming about for myself, <laughs> like to be around my friends and just ha- not have alcohol bother me. Not you know, not be involved with it, but still be involved with them. Yeah, great. Well, we'll get into the to the nitty gritty of the transformation in a second, but maybe just tell us a little bit about what was the final catalyst for you taking action? I know you said that initially you, you may have seen some Facebook ads of mine online and you joined a 30-day no alcohol challenge and then ultimately you joined the 90-day group, which is more hands-on coaching. Or what, what was the catalyst for you finally doing something about it? Uh, truthfully, it was COVID and my fear, my health. Um, Alcohol depresses your um, your uh, pulmonary system. It affects your um, immune system. I used to smoke for 35 years, so um, I have to deal with that. And I was like, you know what? I got to solve this and now because, you know, this is a pretty serious thing. And um, it was a it was a good catalyst for me personally. Just help. Yeah. And, I, you know, and I'll be honest. The other thing was I'm divorced and, um, you know, considering dating other people, but I didn't feel good about going out into the world because I hadn't defined who I was. Was I a drinker and a partier or was I a non-drinker and just like, you know, could go out in social occasions. And so I think that was also getting in the way of me figuring out what direction I was going with my life. I just wanted, I wanted a direction and I didn't feel comfortable, you know, going in the party direction because it was becoming too big of an issue for me personally. And being involved with somebody like me was not going to help me, (laughs) you know? So. Let's skip over to the amazing results that you got, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how you got them through the 90-day group. But uh, I mentioned at at the beginning, um, you lost weight, your blood pressure went down, your resting heart rate went down. So just tell us a a little bit about, you know, your physical markers or what happened to you physically as a result of being alcohol-free now for 112 days. Right. Well, I've always been kind of concerned about my health and. don't remember the reasons I got a blood pressure monitor. It was probably, be- oh, actually it was because I started to get higher readings at the doctor's and she wanted me to monitor it. So I got the blood pressure monitor and it was pretty much hovering at that danger zone, 140 over 90, sometimes 145, sometimes 150, sometimes 90, 93, 95. I mean, sometimes it registered just under two, but I was just playing with something dangerous and I probably should have been medicated but I I didn't want to be so that's what it was before um I took a picture and posted it in project 90 when I took my blood pressure I was pretty excited I believe it was 117 over 79 and that's just now those numbers did not show up when I was in, before alcohol free that's pretty good so so, so just so we're clear, what did your blood pressure go from and what did it go to? Call it 140 over 90 to 117 over 79. I mean, those are just readings. They don't stay there, but that's a good example of what it could be at one point versus another point. Obviously, yeah. It ch- yeah. changes during the day. So that's amazing. So your blood pressure went from 140 over 90 to 117 over 79. Incredible. 
Mm -hmm. uh, resting heart rate? Uh, no. Again, be before I used to really be bothered about the fact that if I was wearing one of those watches, it'd be mid 80s, like 85, 81, 82. And then um, now I get up in the morning and I look at my watch and it's say 58, 59. Be sad, you know. I mean, obviously, again, your heart rate just to stay the same, but big change. Yeah. So, just we've, we're losing a little bit of the um, the Wi-Fi connection. Might be breaking in and out here, but I'll just repeat what you said. That resting heart rate has gone from somewhere what was in the mid eighties to the mid fifties. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Amazing. And then weight. What happened with your weight? My weight, I, I lost uh, just about 21 pounds and in, inside them. That's inside the 90 days. So, um, because I know when I was in the 30 day thing, I was eating candy bars. So when I got into the 90 day thing, I started to take my weight more seriously. Yeah. So you lost 21 pounds, sorry, you lost 21 pounds inside of 90 days. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, what was interesting is that you did post a before and after photo inside of the our Project 90 Facebook group, which elicited a lot of likes and comments and support, and which is pretty amazing because there's a really interesting before and after photo. Like you can absolutely 100% noticeably see a big change in you, can't you? Yeah, and you can tell it's recent because it's the same glasses, which are fairly new. I just got the glasses, I think, in December. So, um, yeah, that picture was taken just 10 days before I quit drinking. Got it. Got it. A very fair representation of what, what life was, what was going on in my life then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else happened to you physically around maybe sleep or energy, hangovers, habits, exercising? Just tell us a little bit about what shifted. So many things shifted inside um, Project 90 because it, I was held accountable, you know, and, and there was always these things like, okay, what do you want to think about changing this week, you know, and just started with little things, being accountable, like walking. Let's start a walking program every morning. Let's make your bed in the morning. Um, let's clean the kitchen at night because I was too busy drinking to be bothered to clean the kitchen. Um, just so it's, it's kind of cool. Like all these little habits that I started that really brought tremendous gratification over time because I'd wake up in the morning without a hangover, be happier, see my clean kitchen, have more energy, not be hungover. Um, you know, have energy at night to clean the kitchen and maybe things that I hadn't cleaned. Um, you know, once you start seeing uh, the results physically, it gives you motivation to continue them. Once you continue them, it's just everything builds on itself. You know, you start with little steps of accountability and then they grow into something bigger. You mentioned as well that your confidence in yourself has increased. So tell us a little bit about that. That's huge, huge. Probably probably the biggest thing um there's so many big things but that's a big thing because um when you drink i think most people can relate to this but when you drink as heavily as i did and then you try and quit and then you realize you're unable to go alcohol free for any length of time without being miserable or going right back to where you started you start um, your self-confidence starts um, to be lost. And I think that's kind of what happens with the weight. It's like, ah, I was really good at drinking and then eating salami and cheese too. So they all go well together. Um, and then you just, you know, you can't accomplish things in your life when you feel bad about yourself, right? And I just, as much as I would um, be successful in life or with my relationships, I always used to think I was fooling people. 
like and say in my head, but if you really knew me, you know, you wouldn't like what you knew. And through the 90 day process, that's completely gone. I, I have complete confidence in myself. I, you know, when I started it, I, it was just about 90 days. When I ended it, I can look back and go, I never, ever, ever want to go to that place again. Never. And I just, you know, I'm not perfect, but I like who I am and I like where I'm going and I believe in myself and there's just a lot of upgrades. Yeah. What have friends or family said to you about what they've noticed in you? <laughs> they're just like, wow. <laughs> uh, you know, they're just like, you're com- I, I, I think mostly they say the confidence is just exudes and the joy shows and the physical changes show. And it's just the wholesale transformation um of happiness confidence physically fitter and looking better and healthier i just a a big package feel i guess they see what i feel yeah and tell us a little bit about the process involved in the 90 day program why do you think this was effective or what were the attributes of that program that were effective for you this time around when maybe doing it on your own and willpower had been ineffective yeah willpower is not the way to go because that's not what this is about it's about understanding to me um understanding the lie that i've been told about alcohol you know about the advertising and how it's you know good for you and it's help you catch the girl. And I, there's just so many lies about alcohol, but it's, it's a wholesale change about how you feel about alcohol and how it affects the body. It's being in community with people that are going through the exact same thing where there's, you know, where you're in the real world and you're worried about things and you have to hide it here. You can go. Yeah. This just, and you can just share what's really going through your mind with other people that go, yeah, that resonates. That's me too. And then you feel it like you're not alone, you know, and you make, to me, what is, I feel like lasting friendships. I I obviously won't know that in time, but I just feel like the friendships I've made from people on different continents, um, you know, just been really special to me. Um, accountability every week if you're going to say yeah i'm going to do this you just feel like you need to do it if you say you're going to do it um you know it's the other thing is good is we're all together whether it's day one day 30 60 or 90 you can see the progress you can remember where you started you can see improvements in people's skin and physically and smiles and it's just I don't know, fraternity, sorority, whatever. It's just a great, great mechanism to be a part of when you're doing something that seems so difficult. At least if you have difficult moments, you know that you're not doing it alone. And that's the other thing I learned is life is a bunch of difficult moments. It's how we navigate them that matters. And I've learned how to navigate some difficult things alcohol free. And not only is it better, but it's, I'm calmer, clarity, can think through things. You don't react, you don't jump and yell and scream. And there's just, so, yeah, there's a lot of pluses to quitting drinking, going alcohol free, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's just fun. It's fun to look at it in the rearview mirror. What's your plan in relation to alcohol ongoing from here? And also what's your plan for your life now that you are alcohol free from here? I, um, I get to go to San Diego for a month. So I get to stop my life in Arizona for a little bit and just almost go on a vacation. Um, 
so I get to test myself in other areas. With respect to alcohol, that's not even a question. It's done. It's out of my life. I and and believe it or not, that that light bulb didn't occur to me until like between somewhere between sixty and ninety days in the program. But I'm pretty confident about that. I um what else am I doing? Uh I'm open to opportunities to do other things to help people to maybe um share my experience with others if they um choose to be interested because I want as many people to know that um this is a really cool thing. I know I know because I've been there I can see a lot of people secretly suffering because this is kind of a big secret for most of us. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, if someone's listening or watching now and they're thinking or entertaining the idea of quitting drinking, whether they're, they're thinking of doing it on their own or whether they're doing it inside of getting some help from, from me and my team, what would you say to them? I'd say if possible, it's far better to do it in a community um, like this because there's, it's funny, James, when you talked to me and I was 20 days into it, I was pretty confident I could do this all without you. Um, Looking in the rear view mirror, there's no way I would be where I am without the program. So it's just, you know, one of the best investments I've made in myself. That's, that's for darn sure. Um, it can be done on, on your own. I know people who have done it. I just, for me and my situation, um, it was a, a great journey. So. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people <clears throat> feel like they can do it on their own, but then realize pretty quickly that they can't. Uh, many people can do it on their own and do do it on their own, but those those many people are actually a very small percentage when we look at it statistically. Statistically speaking, um, willpower and doing it like a, a lone wolf has about a less than a 10% success rate uh, in my experience, and certainly that's what all the studies uh, are on willpower in general show. Um, when you have accountability, community support, it's fun, and then obviously you have skin in the game, like you invested in yourself. That seems to be a sweet spot for making sure that, you know, you get the result that you want. Um, uh, Rosanna, congratulations. I'm super happy for you. And uh, thank you for being such a positive member of our community as well. Um, We really did appreciate that. And thank you for allowing yourself to be coached and also in coaching others. It's one of the things I, I say to people just as they're joining our 90 day program is, at some point you will become the teacher because all the neuroscience shows that the fastest way to learn anything is to teach it. Do you feel like you've now become somewhat of, of, of a teacher? Are you sort of stepping into that, that kind of role now just by sharing your story a little more? That's what I'm hoping for. Yes. Cause I just, uh, I think when you step into something, um, that's so positive, it's definitely something you want to share with other people. So in doing this, um, I think that's the step I'm taking is making sure that I'm part of the process, um, that can help others and hopefully, you know, help you and, and others realize that this is, this is worth it. This is a, a worthwhile investment for yourself. Thank you so much, Rosanna. and congratulations again. Thanks, James. Thank you so much for listening. I have some free stuff for you. If you go to jameswanick.com forward slash guide, I will send you my formula for reducing or quitting alcohol. If you'd like to watch the video versions of these episodes, then you can watch them at my YouTube channel, which is at James Swanick. If you'd like to send me a direct message on Instagram, you can do so at James Swanick. If you would like to try a three-day challenge, a free three-day challenge, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash three-day challenge. If you would like to try the 30-day no alcohol challenge, you can go to 30-day no alcohol challenge. 
If you would like to schedule a 15 minute exploratory call with one of my coaches to see how we may be able to help you in your alcohol free journey, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. And my request is if indeed you enjoyed this episode or you have enjoyed the podcast, would you please go ahead and rate the show in iTunes and would you please write a review? A review might just be a sentence saying, great, listen, hey, this was fantastic. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Whenever you give a rating, whenever you write a review, it surges our podcast up in the rankings, enabling more people to see it and hear it and potentially inspiring someone out there to reduce or quit alcohol and potentially transform their life. So yes, while it does help me to get ratings and to get reviews, you will actually be directly contributing to helping someone's life by having them discover this podcast. So if you are open to inspiring others and to helping me in the process, would you please go ahead and give this episode a ranking and would you please write a review? Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you on the next one.